Today is Tuesday, February 21st, 2012, and we are interviewing Lamar Hartman at the Illinois State Library. Lamar, you said your name is truly Henry Lamar Hartman, right. but you like to go by Lamar. Yes. Right. Okay. Can you tell us what year you, what, when your birthday is? What year? What month, month of day you were born, and where you were born at? Uh, I was born July the 7th in 1923, or, yeah, 1923. And where were you born at? In Irving, Illinois. Irving, Illinois. Okay, my name is Cheryl Walker, and I'll be interviewing you. What was your rank in the service? I was discharged. I was a radioman first class in the Navy. Where did you serve? Well, all over the Pacific. <laughs> all over. I got a whole list of, of names, but it, it was all in the Pacific. Can you tell us a story? What was it in the service that you remember? Oh, I remember all of it. It, uh, it started with Pearl Harbor. And uh, we had, uh, well, first of all, I'll, I'll back up a little bit and let you know that I, uh, I had my uh, boot camp and Traded the training for the, in a school for become a radioman at Great Lakes uh, Naval Training Center, and then I went aboard the USS Selfridge, which is a, a destroyer, and uh, that was uh, uh, I went in. I was uh, 17. When I went aboard the Selfridge, I just turned 18. And uh, we were out of maneuvers, and uh, they uh, called us in, took a lot of practice, torpedo heads and everything, and, and put live ones in and load this down with, with ammunition and food. and. Uh, we got underway out of Pearl Harbor, and uh, we got out out to sea, and the captain called us uh, together and told us what our mission was. This was a month before Pearl Harbor, and uh, they, uh, we had orders to go. To, Canton Island, two degrees below the equator. It uh, had a merchant ship down there, and they was afraid to send it back to itself. And he told us then that we had orders to fire on any Axis vessel that we came in contact with. And uh, we we got down there and had to circle the island for seven days till it got ready. And when it got ready, we brought it back to Pearl Harbor. And they finally released us uh, the, uh, the 6th of December. And uh, we got in and uh, of course we had to run out of food and everything and we didn't have any but that didn't hurt. But uh, anyway, uh, this is what we got up to. The next day was uh, the attack of the Japanese on Pearl Harbor. That that I'll never forget. I know that. And there there are other things, but uh, down the line in in my service. What other things do you remember? What? What other things? What besides Pearl Harbor? Do you remember the friendships you made? Uh, well, uh, I, 
guess uh, uh, my general quarter station at Pearl Harbor was in the emergency radio. If the main radio got knocked out, and we'd take over. And uh, his name was Harwood. He was a little old. He was older than I was. He was probably in the early 30s. And uh, uh, he kept telling me, he says, uh, don't worry, he said, if, uh, if you get your head blowed off, I'll pick it up and set it back on and stuff like that. <laughs> but he, you know, he was just a, a fun of guy and it didn't bother him, but it did me. Anyway, uh, that was the one. But there was uh, uh, one uh, one man that was on the radio track. He, uh, when we got hit on the sulfur, he finally got split up off the head. Uh, he, uh, he, and the war ended. He stayed in Australia, and uh, I never got to see him after that. Uh, uh, he married an Australian girl, and he went into business over there himself in construction. And he did real well, they told me, and so, anyway, that was another good friend I made. Lamar, did you go into the service by yourself, or did you go in with family members, or did you have some friends that went into service with you? Yeah, I, uh, uh, Got up this morning and uh, I went up, of course, over in big city of 600, you know, and you know everybody there. And I, uh, I went up there, uptown, and uh, these two friends of mine were uh, over at this uh, service station that served ice cream and stuff. Uh, and they come running out of there and yelling at me, come, come look, come look. And uh, so I went across and looked with them. And uh, had a, the Navy had an article in there that they were taking, uh, taking you at, at age 17. And one of them was 17 also, and the other one was 18. And they wanted me to join up in the Navy. So they convinced me that maybe we ought to. <laughs> but uh, we all went home, you know, and you know what we ran into there. They just, uh, and folks that have nothing part of me kept after me. Finally, all three of them, parents, finally agreed. So uh, in December, uh, the uh, 30th, 19, Forty, uh, we joined the Navy. So there was two others, or three of us. There had already been some from Irving, some young men that I knew, and they were having me in school. But uh, they were up there, uh, so I kind of made it make up the mind, you know. Of course, we all got separated. But but that was that was what we did. So the three of you did not serve your time together. Well, we we did at Great Lakes, and then after boot camp was over, they they were uh, 
they were uh, uh, sent to uh, uh, the submarine base at the uh, end of uh, Oahu, uh, near Pearl Harbor. And I went to school for four months. And then when I got on the Selfridge, uh, we would come in to Pearl. I would uh, get to go over to the sub base and, and see both of them. In fact, I liked it over there. It was kind of cool. And, and uh, they'd go to town and I'd borrow their book and stretch out where it was cool. <laughs> But no, they, they, then he, uh, one of them uh, finally got to, uh, got shipped to, uh, he kept wanting China duty, and he got as far as the Philippines, and uh, he, then the war started, and he was captured on Corregidor in the death march and spent the war in a prison in Japan and uh, uh, they had reported him as missing and then they reported him as being dead and he was after the war was over he was uh, uh, let out of the prison and he was Hillsborough seven mile and he got back to Hillsborough and uh, happened to run into his brother there. And uh, we all thought he was dead. He'd been reported. They never, never reported him uh, being in prison or nothing. It was just that one. They even had a funeral for him. And here he shows up. So his brother called his dad and mom. And, uh, Mom answered the phone and he got his dad on there because he didn't want us to have her, you know. And, and uh, they told him and sure enough it was him and he, and he survived and she liked to went to pieces, I guess, and, and uh, pretty glad to see him anyway. And the other one went board with an old, uh, uh, old destroyer that was in there by the name of Litchfield and it, it uh, uh, was a submarine tender and he stayed on it and but he after the war was over he uh, uh, he kept re-enlisting re and, uh, and uh, stayed in there until the war was over and, uh, and uh, then he went on to retirement, and uh, he, uh, in fact, lived over here in Jacksonville. I think when he came back, he had gotten mar uh, married with, uh, and uh, so anyway, that's the two that went in with me. You know? We all. Saw a little bit of time together. Were you awarded any medals or citations? Well, not really the, the normal medals, you know. I had one commendation for. From a destroyer squadron uh, oh I forgot he was over the, the, the destroyer squadrons they had nine destroyers in there and he was the commander of those nine destroyers and I served on his flag and uh, uh, after we got Torpedoed on the on the Selfridge uh, later in the war. Uh, he uh, they we got it in and uh, and uh, 
we had to go on other other ships. And at that time, uh, we had lost most of our squadron, and uh, so they decided to uh, to uh, disband the squadron we were in and join the two together and have one one new squadron. And that's what they did, and that's when he, uh, well, we'd, after we'd been it got hit, then he, we were uh, not on there anymore, but he, he gave us his commendation, give us the leave to go. We got to come home then, and, uh, and uh, which I hadn't been home probably for like three years, or something like that. But uh, anyway, uh, that was that one. Tell us about staying in touch with your family. Was it difficult? Did you have a hard time staying in touch with your family? Had a hard time what? Staying in touch with your family. Staying in touch? Well, uh, not really, uh, it just didn't do it very much. Uh, I, uh, and I used to write letters and had a chance, but one time we were out of sea for eight months, so we, but usually if we were out to sea like that a long time, they'll pull into some island and, and have a mail set up to come there and, and go. For, uh, due, due to the situation, I thought it was great. Yeah. Besides Pearl Harbor, where else were you stationed at? Well, Well, be on the Selfridge, uh, we were, uh, we were uh, uh, at, uh, we got to go to Australia, uh, Sydney, and uh, operate out there for a while, and then, then we got called, uh, to uh, New Zealand, so we went to New Zealand and uh, joined a task force over there, and we got underway and uh, joined another force and went in for the invasion of Guadalcanal, and uh, we. Uh, We uh, had a lot of we had a lot of acts in there. It was, uh, the Japanese had come down to what they call the slot on the in the, that group of islands and they'd fire on us and get around and head back. And one night was even firing on herself. We had two forces, one of landing in one of the water canal and one to lobby. And, it, uh, and then the Australian cruiser Canberra got hit. They called us out to finish sinking it because they it got hit. But they weren't sure they were going to hold God now. And so they didn't want them to capture it. They got everybody off of it and sent us out to sink it. And uh, then we had several battles they called the uh, Savile Island or the Small Island. This is the island they come down and circle and it comes all the ruckus and everything. And uh, uh, one night uh, we were called, well we went up that slot up out every night and uh, it was getting ready to 
Castro got water canal is going to take uh, uh, Bougainville and then northern Salt Montana. And uh, they, uh, we'd go up every night and shell their barges and bring their supplies in, evacuating or whatever they might be doing. But we'd get out of there before daylight and uh, we were, went up there, uh, like I say, every night, I don't know how many nights all together over the period of time, but, but they, uh, we were up there one night and uh, we just started to pull out and uh, they uh, uh, picked up a, a radar contact on eight Japanese ships and there was three of us, three destroyers. So of course they radioed for help and they had three more headed up to help us out, but uh, they didn't get up there in time. So we went in and attacked them myself. And the uh, one, one destroyer got hit and then the second one rammed in the back of it. So it put both of them out of action and just left us. We'd been, we'd already fired four more torpedoes in ourselves, had four more, and made a circle to go around and, and uh, fire the rest of them. And uh, uh, two uh, Japanese torpedoes hit us in the bow, and we lost everything in, in front of the bridge, the whole bow. And in that book, you'll see uh, pictures of it. And uh, uh, but then the, the other three finally got up there, but they did come alongside and put the, took the wounded off. And uh, and uh, a lot of the men and uh, there was sixty of us that uh, brought the ship back in. We, we could make five knots uh, and they give us air, air patrol. Uh, in fact, uh, I listened to it on the radio, uh, they had their frequency in. And uh, I remember hearing one guy they asked Mason to come in. He's burning out of gas. They told him to stay on, stay on uh, until he got relieved. Here he is running out of gas. Everything worked out for him, I guess. I never heard of anything happening to him. But uh, anyway, we made it back in. And uh, uh, that's when uh, uh, I left with the flag to go to another, another ship. And in fact, I ended up on about three of them there until they, they were, we was over around New Guinea, I think, and with, uh, when this commander, you know, his squadron was done away with, he gave us that, that message and gave us, uh, gave us leave we got back to home. <laughs> yeah, but then, after we got home, we ended up uh, in a Joint Army Navy Marine communication outfit down uh, at inside California. And then we got on the ship and went to Pearl and then went in on the, on the the uh, landing at Saipan, uh, we followed the, the Marines in and when they got the beachhead then we'd, we'd go in and set up communication behind him. And uh, when we got Saipan done, well then we made the landing and set up communications on the 10 
and I was on Tannigan when I got this shirt, or when I was sent home for this shirt. So was the food pretty good? Pardon? Was the food pretty good? When you were, the food, was the food pretty good? Oh, well that's one thing about the Navy, you know. Um, being aboard ship, you always had food. And uh, good food. <laughs> yes, they're very good. And uh, we ate with the Marines on Saipan and Tinny, you know, on the Asians. And uh, it's not not like eating on a, a board ship. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. so when you were on ship, did you actually have, you didn't have sea rations? No, uh, we did uh, on Saipan and Tinny, but not a board ship. Uh, no, we, we didn't. Uh, we got back from that trip to Canton, they pulled in there the night before. First thing they did when we anchored was uh, brought cold milk and ice cream and, and uh, stuff aboard. Yeah. Oh, the Navy, I swear by the Navy, they were, they were good. So when you were on ship, did you sleep in regular bunks or did you, how did you, what kind of bedding did you sleep in? Had a uh, you know these these wire be about three high had three bunks down there in the compartment in the after part of the ship and they had lockers underneath them yeah. Did you do, did you have anything special that you carried for good luck with you? No. <laughs> no I didn't. How did you entertain yourself? Oh. That destroyer was, what, 30, 35 feet wide and 300 feet long. Wasn't very big, but uh, uh, nothing special. We just, uh, uh, if we were out or somewhere or had a chance, we'd play cards or something like that on there. The bigger ships, they had more activity. They didn't have things on there. They could even have movies, you know. Uh, but we didn't have that. And that, that was all right. We made that fun. When you were in some of the islands that you were in, did you go up? Were you able to get off the ship and go have a leave, or did you get to tour the islands at all? On the side path, uh, uh, no. The Japanese, the Marines had to retake uh, Garapan, the biggest city on there, three times. Just a level bit. And it really wasn't anything to see if you went anywhere. But uh, on Tinian, you know, after the landing, the island was secured and everything. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, built a uh, movie screen, the island was secured though, and uh, built a nice big radio shack. Uh, we had a communication center. Uh, uh, and uh, have a movie every night. <laughs> uh, 
especially after the war ended, you know, uh, it, uh, but, uh, no, we, uh, I don't know, there's one island, I, I got to go show on with the mailman, but that was to pick up the mail and come back to the ship, <laughs> we didn't get, then they couldn't do anything. We had a lot of stops in Sydney. We stopped in Brisbane, and you know that was interesting. And, uh, things like that. Do you recall any particular hum humorous or unusual events that you? I'm sorry. Do you recall any humorous events or unusual events? Call any what about what about um, the the hammocks oh no <laughs> they only do that at boot camp <laughs> no what happened with those <laughs> huh what happened with the hammocks <laughs> well, uh, First night, uh, you don't get much sleep because you're always falling out, of it, you know. And then, after a couple of days, me and this other guy, we got an idea. We'll tie ourselves in, and you know that work. We had a long rope session. We tied our stuff in, then we. In a while, you got used to it because after how many weeks is it? Uh, not, not many, but they put you on a one about three foot high off the floor in a barracks with them. And then you graduate to the one that's about nine foot off the, off the floor, and it's got a coat rack and everything you wouldn't in. So you don't want to fall out on one limb and break your back. But I made it. <laughs> yeah, it was something else. What were some of the pranks that you and your other and others played on e each other? Tricks. I don't know. Really. You don't remember any? I don't remember anything. Uh, What did you think of your officers and fellow soldiers? Do you remember any of them in particular? I'll tell you, we were lucky. You'll see in them books, pictures that the officers took and gave us. They knew that we couldn't take them or we'd have them. And, uh, the officers were super. There was only one deal we had. We had uh, on Tinian, we built this communication center and everything. And our commanding officer was a Marine Colonel. And uh, he, uh, when he was on Saipan, he called us, he mentioned mail. He called together one morning, somebody had been complaining about my getting mail, and he informed us real quick that we were not out there to get mail, we were out there to win the war. And then, over the, he was uh, on the Ontinian and the other islands too, the civilians, you know, they're Filipinos or whatever they might be, they had them in, in uh, uh, located uh, in a certain area where they were fenced in and what have you and not very out, but they get them out for working parties. And uh, one day uh, they were out for a working party and it started to rain 
and he brought the, the our some of our people were working with him. He called he called uh, those workers in, and our men. He made them stay out in the rain. He's always doing something like that, you know. It's just uh, he's just onward, and uh, it's just unbelievable. And one of the officers got word to Washington, and uh, he didn't last long. And I was, he was in that building. I was in there and saw him when he got this message, uh, relieving him of his command there. And uh, he took that and let him, he smoked the pipe, and he took that pipe and he threw it down on the concrete floor. It broke all the pieces, and that was it. I never saw him again. So, you know, the, the right people will take care of them. I think, I think you'll find most of them that, that were super duper. Very did. Did you keep a diary? No. Do you recall the day that your service ended? Do you recall the day that you got out of the service? Did I? Do you recall the day that you got out of the um, Navy? Yeah, it was uh, July 13th, I believe. Uh, I copied my discharge in there, but I think it was July the 13th because uh, I had gotten home and uh, and it was married and uh, uh, and the wife was uh, out there with me for a while and then I finally got out. I had. To, I went in, they sent me to Shoemaker for discharge and they wouldn't discharge me because I, I had two weeks left to do. So, so they sent me to the federal building in San Francisco and I worked there and I asked them about my discharge and they, they said well, I had to wait for a draft to, to the Shoemaker to where the, they discharged. So I waited, and the day it came, I was due to be discharged. Still nothing. And uh, I go seven days over. That was all right for me to take me over, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I finally got it, got discharged. That worked out good. She and I came to Idaho. I had a handsome old relation there. We got to stop, and I had a Idaho coming home. And, and, uh, Got home okay, so that's what counted. Yeah. What did you do the days and the weeks after you got out of service? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Did you go to school? Did you work? No, we. Uh, Of course, they had that set up for unemployment, you know, when, when finally in. Illinois passed a, had a nice bonus for the veterans during the war. And, uh, They had uh, my mom and my brother-in-law that I had there had purchased this restaurant for town, and uh, so uh, that was, that ended up to be mine. And uh, 
we worked in that restaurant for a while, and then uh, didn't uh, didn't uh, stay long. And then I opened the pool hall for a while, and then sold it out. Phillips, and uh, they were gone, and they needed somebody to help his aunt down there because she was getting cataracts and couldn't take care of her. So we moved down there with him, and uh, he just happened to work in Phillips' camp. They, Phillips had houses there in uh, Maplewood, south of East St. Louis. And uh, uh, I just happened to get a job there in the office, so uh, I stayed with them uh, for uh, like 38 years or something. And, and uh, out from that terminal, I went to the one in the down to Arlington, Texas, and then I went to uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and up to Decatur, and then out. <laughs> I retired from there. So you didn't live in Illinois? Pardon? You didn't, you moved around after you got out of the service? After I got out of service? Mm -hmm. Now the only thing I did, we, we were out in New Mexico for a year or two and uh, uh, I had a son out there and they had three kids and they both worked and they wanted us to come out and uh, help take with him. So uh, that was something I just got to do. Uh, they had a, a chain of convenience stores out there in Albuquerque and Rio Rancho, right the suburb of there, and uh, I got a job down there, uh, just uh, working in a convenience store. Did you join any veterans organizations? I belong to the American Legion, and. Uh, I belong to uh, Pearl Harbor Survivors Association, which uh, uh, and uh, that the National Pearl Harbor Survivors, Survivors uh, uh, is not uh, operating anymore, as you know. After, after the first year, uh, they no longer exist as such. Uh, and uh, they, uh, let's see. I guess that's the only one. Did you attend any reunions? Did you attend any reunions? That's did your Did your group have any reunions? Have a reunion? Mm -hmm. Where you guys got together? Uh, well, we did uh, we, on the Selfridge, uh, Survivors, uh, uh, or people in it. We had a, re a Selfridge reunion. I went to the first one I had, 
oh, like 20 years ago. And uh, I never did get back to another one. They had them all over the state. And uh, uh, that's the only one I made. But I stayed in contact with them. I, I got their, their uh, letters and the information and everything. Uh, I stayed with them. I did, I did stay in contact with them. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I don't know. Oh, I have one thing. It'd be interesting to be in there. I think I, when we went to Canton Island on the Selfridge and uh, crossed the equator, uh, uh, I got initiated into King Neptune's. <laughs> So now I'm a shellback, I think they call them, if you've, you've crossed it. And then you're authorized to do it to others, and help do it to others. And that was really something. It, it, it uh, of course, that was before the war, and after the war they didn't allow it, and the Navy didn't, but I can see why. But, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they would rig that up, uh, and yeah, like you'd have to go get your picture taken, and then and they shoot grease out of the face, and you cut your hair all off, and just gobs, and use greasy stuff for for uh, tonic for your hair. Run you through a big chute, the wind chute. Uh, running water through it, and you have to crawl down through that whole thing, and then whack you on the rear end as you went by. It was really something, and uh, that's something I don't, don't ever forget. Okay? And uh, when, I, when I was on the Saipan, I had an old well there, and I was washing clothes. And uh, uh, somebody, I hung my shirt with my billfold in it, on the bush there, and I went to get it, and it was going so much. I uh, shoved that card and I lost all that. But uh, anyway, I don't. I didn't lose it up here. I still remember. I like things like that. Well, I would like to thank you for serving our country. Well, you're entirely welcome. I just happened to be there. <laughs> and I'd like to thank you for your time today. 